Praise the Lord, we miss somebody. Praise the Ancient of Days. Praise the Lady of the Valley. Praise our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are most welcome in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are studying the last days. We are studying the end times. We have already seen the first two indicators or signs of the end time. In sign one, we saw that the spirit of Antichrist is already in the world. In sign two, we saw that the new world order is already in the world. We are now going to examine sign three, known as peace and security. Let's pray. Pray, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. Lord Jesus, let us understand that your word is being fulfilled, O oh Lord, among us today, that we are witnesses to the fulfillment of your word, because your word teaches that in the last day, people will be crying for peace and safety, who will cry for peace and security. O oh Lord Jesus, the various organizations in the world, various governments in the world have been crying for peace and security, peace and safety. This is a fulfillment of your word. We thank you because you are the Lord who never fails. We thank you because when you say something, it comes to pass. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. I cover this presentation with the blood of Lord Jesus in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is the third sign known as peace and security cry. You know, in the various parts of the world, people are crying for peace, people are crying for safety, people are crying for security. Various governments in the world have been calling for peace and security. Various international organizations they always call for peace and safety. They always call for peace and security. They always cry for peace and security. They are always crying for peace and security. Various governments in the world are always crying for peace and security. You know, all the various international organizations, if you listen to them, what they are saying, they always talk about peace and security. This is a fulfillment of the scriptures. We are witnesses. To this awesome fulfillment of the scripture. This teaching is divided into the following five points. One, peace and security cry or longing. One, peace and security cry or peace and safety cry or longing. One, peace and safety cry or longing. Two, the prince of peace rejected by the world. The prince of peace Rejected by the world. Point three, world peace impossible without the Prince of Peace. World peace impossible without the Prince of Peace. Point four, the deceptive world peace utopia. Point four, the deceptive world peace utopia. Point five, summary or resume. I repeat. This teaching is divided into the following five points. Point one, peace and safety cry or longing. Point two, the prince of peace rejected by the world. Point three, world peace impossible without the prince of peace. Point four, the deceptive world peace utopia. Point five, summary. O resume. Point one, peace and safety cry O longing. Let's open our Bibles to First Thessalonians five verse three. First Thessalonians five verse three. I read, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. Cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So this scripture is being fulfilled 
today in our presence we are witnesses of the fulfillment of this scripture all the various governments in the world are calling for peace and, and safety all the various governments in the world are crying for peace and security various people are crying for peace and security all the various international organizations un etc they are all crying for peace and security peace and safety everyone is longing for peace and safety people are longing for peace and safety people don't want to be sick they don't want to have anything to, to, to affect their ways of life negatively. People are crying for peace and security. Various governments are crying for peace and security. Various international organizations are crying for peace and security. There has always been a cry for peace and security by international organizations and the various governments around the world so this is a fulfillment of this scripture and it reveals that we are living in the last days it reveals that our lord and savior jesus christ is coming in a moment from now because this scripture is being fulfilled before us this scripture is being fulfilled in our presence we are witnesses to the fulfillment of this scripture point two the prince of peace rejected by the world the peace of peace rejected by the world let's open the bibles to Isaiah 9 verse 6 Isaiah 9 verse 6 i read for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. And he is being rejected by the world. The world has rejected him. We saw in sign one, the spirit of Antichrist, that one of the objective of the spirit of antichrist is to reject christ and to replace christ with a false christ and that's what is happening the whole world have rejected the lord jesus christ the unbelieving world they have rejected the lord jesus christ and they think that they can have peace without him he's the prince of peace The Lord Jesus Christ paid the price for our peace. Therefore, since the world has rejected him, there can be no peace in the world. There can be no peace in the world without him. There can be no peace in the world without the Prince of Peace. So keep that in mind. Point three, world peace impossible without the Prince of Peace. Let's open our Bibles to John 14 verse 27. John 14, verse 27, I read. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is telling us believers that we should not be troubled by what is happening in the world. We should not be afraid by what is happening in the world. We should not be fearful because of all the troubles that are happening in the world today, because God has not given us the spirit of fear, He's given us the spirit of love and of sound mind. The Bible is telling us, the Lord is telling us not to be troubled, not to be afraid, because He has given us true peace. Hallelujah. The peace that comes only from the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 16. Psalm 119 verse 165, I mean to say. Psalm 119 verse 165a. Part A of Psalm 119 verse 165. I read, Get peace have they which love thy law. Get peace are those believers who love 
the commandment of, of the Lord. Great peace are those believers who love the precepts of the Lord. Great peace have those believers who delight in the commandment of the Lord, who delight in the precepts of the Lord. Now, since the world has rejected the Lord, the world has rejected the commandment of the Lord, there can be no peace because great peace is only with those who delight in the commandment of the Lord. May you delight in the commandment of the Lord. May you delight in the precepts of the Lord all the days of your life in Jesus' name. So, it is crystal clear that true peace comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. And since the world has rejected our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there can be no true peace in the world. There can be no true peace without the Prince of Peace. Point four, the deceptive world peace utopia. You know, when you watch television, you will see all these various international organizations longing for world peace, preaching world peace, preaching world peace and uh, peace and security, peace and safety. You see various governments preaching peace and safety, peace and security. You see various people longing for world peace and security. This is all deception. Because there can be no world peace without the Prince of Peace. There can be no peace without the Prince of Peace. There can be no peace. There can be no true peace without the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Proverbs 20. I mean, I beg your pardon. Proverbs 12, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 20. I read. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil but to the counselors of peace is joy so all the people when you reject christ then you are indulging in evil because when you reject christ then satan will be your father there are only two kingdoms the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness is led by satan the kingdom of light is led by our lord and Savior jesus christ when you reject christ you automatically come under the kingdom of darkness, whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, because there are only two kingdoms. And everybody under the kingdom of darkness is evil from God's perspective, because Satan is evil and everybody under him is evil as well. It doesn't matter how good the person seems. It doesn't matter how good the person appears to be. It doesn't matter what good he does. God sees that person as evil because Satan is evil. And everybody under him is also evil. Isaiah 48.22 Isaiah 48, 22. There is no peace, said the Lord, unto the wicked. Isaiah 57, 21. Isaiah 57, 21. There is no peace, said my God, to the wicked. So these two, uh, two scriptures are telling us that there can be no peace to somebody who has rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though the person may appear to be peaceful, but Spiritually speaking, there can be no peace for him or her because the person has rejected the Lord Jesus Christ and has come under the, common, uh, the condemnation. The person is now under Satan. And when you are under Satan, there can be no peace for you. So there can be no peace for the wicked. All those who have rejected Jesus Christ, they are wicked by rejecting him, by, re by rejecting him according to the scriptures. When you reject Christ, you come under the condemnation of Satan. So when you reject Christ, then Satan becomes your father. And there, be, there can be no peace for you because there is no peace in the kingdom of darkness. 
So since the world, since the whole world has rejected Christ, there can be no peace in the world. So this world peace utopia is simply a deception. True peace is found only in Christ. Real peace is found only in Christ. Because Christ is the Prince of Peace. He has paid the price for our peace. True safety is found only in Christ. Point five, summary or resume. Peace and safety cried, peace and safety longing is a sign of the end time. Peace and security cried, peace and security longing is a sign of the end time. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as travel upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. The Bible says they will not, they will not escape. They will cry for peace and security. They will cry for peace and safety, but destruction will come upon them, and none of them will escape. That is how awful it is. All the people crying for peace and safety in the world, all the people crying for peace and security in the world, sudden destruction is coming upon them, and none of them shall escape. According to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. May you not be among them in Jesus' name. Cleave to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the Prince of Peace. He has given us true peace. Hallelujah. He has given us true peace not to be afraid of anything. Not to be afraid of what is happening in the world. Not to be afraid of all the tribulations in the world. Not to be afraid, not to be troubled. In first, in, in uh, John 14 verse 27, in John 14 verse 27, he says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So the Lord Jesus Christ has given us true peace. Not to be afraid, not to be troubled, not to be anxious, not to be weary, because he is our leader. He is our captain. And he's the Prince of Peace. It doesn't matter what we see. It doesn't matter what we feel. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has given us true peace. He has admonished us not to be fearful, not to be afraid, and not to be troubled. May it be so to you in Jesus' name. It's time for us to pray. Stand up on your feet and begin to pray. Ask the Lord to give you true peace. He has promised and he has already given us the true peace. Claim it. Claim the true peace. Thank the Lord for giving us this true peace in his word. In John 14, 27, he says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. And neither let it be afraid. Pray that they will come to pass in your, in your life. You will not be troubled. You will not be afraid. You will not be fearful. You will not be weary. You will not be sad. You will overcome every fear. You will overcome every trouble. You will overcome every trial. In Jesus' name, do not listen to the world. The world is crying for peace. The world is crying for safety. The world is crying for peace, the world is crying for security, but there can be no peace and security in the world because the Bible tells us that sudden destruction is coming upon them and that none of them will escape. Thank the Lord for this revelation. Thank the Lord for this revelation that He has made us to understand that we are living in, in end times. We are living in the last days and so we have to get ourselves ready. Get yourself ready for the coming of the Lord in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are the Prince of Peace and you have given us that peace, Lord Jesus. And you have admonished us not to be troubled and not to be afraid in any way, Lord Jesus. 
Give us the grace not to be afraid. Give us the grace not to be troubled. Help us to understand that the peace preached in the world is not the true peace. That all these people talking about peace and security, they are deceiving themselves because there will be sudden destruction upon them and none of them shall escape. Lord, help them to understand your word and to repent and to forsake their hundred of heart. Lord, have mercy upon them, Lord. We are calling for world peace. Those of them who are calling for peace and security, have mercy upon them. Give them the grace, Lord, to repent and to forsake all their unrighteousness and to look up to you, O oh Lord, the author and finisher of our faith. We look up to you, the Prince of Peace, because true peace comes from you and not from anyone. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. We exalt your name. We magnify your name. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Remain blessed and see you soon in sign 4 of our study of last days, our study of the end time. In Jesus' name, bye-bye for the moment.